Morning, church. I uh, just want to spend some time now reflecting on the events of Palm Sunday. Before we do that, I'd like to just open in prayer. Join with me. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we thank you for sending Jesus, uh, your Son, uh, to come as a King, but as a humble and meek King. Help us to receive him like we ought. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, during World War II, Germany surprised the world early on in the war because they had this twin thing going of their, their air force, the Luftwaffe, and their panzer tanks. And they would do this thing called a blitz. And uh, countries and neighbours would just be overwhelmed that they would just kind of come in, pound them from the sky, and then send in the tanks. And uh, they would be overwhelmed. And pretty soon, nations and neighbours started falling and coming under the rule and reign of Nazi Germany. And of course, in that rule and reign, life looked very different. Life looked very different. And uh, it was difficult being under such tyranny. Well, fast forward a number of years, and after the events of Normandy and the invasion by the Western Allies, one by one, those countries started to be reclaimed. And if you've ever had the blessing of watching a documentary about the liberation of France, for example, you see the streets lined with people and the joy on their faces, their sense of anticipation because they've just been liberated uh, from this terrible oppression, and they see that their deliverer has arrived. Well, when you think about that scene, you get an image of this scene, you know, something of what was happening. In, in many ways, it's very different, but in some ways, this is what's happening here. Uh, the people are welcoming the coming of a king. As Matthew proclaims his gospel, he tells us of the good news of the coming king. And this story reveals a couple of things about that king. Uh, Matthew tells us that Jesus is the meek king who comes in the name of the Lord. That is, Matthew tells us that Jesus is the meek king who comes in the name of the Lord. Now I want to break it down into kind of two movements, and that being Jesus and the donkey and what that says about him, and the second being the crowd and their response and what that says to us. So Matthew uh, one, uh, one, verse 1 to verse 7 tells us about the donkey situation. Matthew tells us that Jesus was approaching Jerusalem and it seems to me that something of a climactic moment, you know, there we have it, the king approaching what was the spiritual heart of Israel. And in that moment he's proclaiming his kingship. And there's a sense of anticipation. Something big is about to happen. And nothing Jesus does here kind of suppresses that. You know, we've seen early in the Gospels that Jesus kind of runs away from those moments. But here, he's making a definitive statement about his identity, that he is, in fact, a king. As he approaches Jerusalem, he comes to a place called Bethphage, and he sends his disciples on a mission to grab a donkey for him. It's not unlike Jesus to send people on mission, and that's what he does here. They're to go in to the town, um, two of them, and grab a donkey and bring it back to Jesus. And if someone asks about it, they're, they're to say that the Lord needs it. Scholars are kind of divided about this. They think maybe, um, maybe Jesus had a supernatural knowledge of this situation and used his you know, identity as the Son of God to make it happen. Or it could just be that he organized it ahead of time. But needless to say, these two disciples, these disciples uh, go into the town and, and grab the donkey and bring it back to Jesus. And uh, this moment, I guess, is... if. If we're unclear about exactly how that worked out, one thing is clear, it's a demonstration of Jesus' authority, a demonstration of his uh, being a king, I guess. And so when he comes back, um, they, they, they bring him the donkey. Um, Matthew also sees in this statement about Jesus and his identity again um, in the context of the broader story of the Bible. So this grabbing of a donkey for Jesus to ride on, it's part of the, the story that God is telling. You know, um, the Bible Project guys say that the Bible is a unified story that leads us to Jesus, and Matthew is constantly picking up that broader story and pointing towards Jesus. And here he points to Zechariah 9.9. 9. And in the face of Israel's enemies, Ze Zechariah anticipated the coming of a deliverer. This deliverer would enter Jerusalem riding on a donkey. 
So at this moment, what is clear is that Jesus is the great deliverer the story anticipated. And there he is, coming, riding on a donkey. But the fact that he comes on a donkey perhaps suggests something about his nature. That he's not the kind of king that's seeking war, but the kind of king that has a different kind of kingdom in mind. He's not riding on a great stallion, he's riding on a donkey, coming gently towards the city of Jerusalem. So what do these things say about Jesus? Well, I think it says something about his identity as a servant. The second movement in the story is the movement of the crowd and what Matthew tells us about the crowd and their response to Jesus. So the disciples go get the donkey and Jesus gets on it and a large crowd forms instantly. And as they do, they grab palm prongs and coats and they throw them on the ground before Jesus and they loudly say the word, Hosanna. I didn't quite know what that word meant and yesterday I looked it up in Bible Hub and it just says it means uh, something like here comes our deliverer or come deliverer come you know it's an anticipation of rescue and so these people are throwing prongs uh, on the ground and throwing coats under the donkey's feet and recognizing Jesus as the great deliverer. I think it's useful at this point to understand some historical context because 200 years before this moment in time in history, there was a a man by the name of Simon Maccabees and Simon liberated Israel from their their enemies and the people um, did something very similar for him and he was actually seen riding, uh, riding between a crowd and they were throwing palm throngs on the ground, throwing uh, coats on the ground. So I think part of what the the crowds are saying is they're anticipating a great liberator and they see in Jesus someone perhaps like Simon Maccabees, someone who ultimately might have more success and they want to acknowledge his kingship. When I think about the donkey and the crowd, I see them speaking of two, two visions of the kind of king they anticipate. Two visions of the kind of kings they anticipate. The crowd longed for a military conqueror, and yet the kingdom Jesus was building well was of another sort. Jesus came to conquer for sure. He came to usher in a new kingdom and to do away with the old, but he didn't come with a sword and an army, but in meekness and in grace, riding a donkey. And so we have these two pictures, Jesus riding a donkey and a crowd acknowledging Jesus as the son of David, the great king, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And I wondered if we could just think about that for a moment. I was listening to a podcast this week by John Maxwell and he was talking about leadership. And it kind of struck me because he said early in the interview, you know, um, When I was young, I thought leadership was about the platform and doing everything really well. And he said, that's part of the picture. You know, you should try and be the best you could be, try and grow um, your capacity to influence. Uh, But through the course of time, through conversation and bitter experience, he came to understand leadership differently. Leadership, he woke up and realized one day, is about adding value to those that you serve. Adding value to those that you serve. And I was thinking about that and thinking about this picture of the great king, King Jesus, coming on the one hand as the son of David, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the great deliverer, and on the other hand, on a donkey. And I was thinking about those two things blended together. And and we see what kind of king that Jesus came to be. Well, what kind of king did Jesus come to be? Well, Matthew tells us, A couple of things about that, the first of which is that Jesus came as a servant king, riding a donkey, not a horse, Uh, healing the sick, not bearing a sword. Jesus came as a gentle ruler, actually on one occasion uh, looking at and pondering Jerusalem and their response to him or lack of right response to him. This is what Jesus was heard to say. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I long to gather you as children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. 
So this picture of, is of a, a Messiah, a Saviour who longs to gather in. He doesn't come to bring war. He comes to welcome. He comes riding on a donkey. So if you're asking me, you know, if you're asking Matthew, who is this King Jesus? Well, he's the meek King, the gentle King who comes to redeem and bring in. Well, now let's consider the crowd's response and what that might be saying to us about rightly responding to Jesus. How did the crowd respond to Jesus? They responded by declaring, Hosanna, come save us. They responded by recognising him as the son of David, the Messiah. They responded as recognising that he was God's great deliverer. God's great deliverer. And so this passage is an invitation to accept and receive Jesus as King, to acknowledge him as Lord. And in this moment, this group of people kind of exemplifies that, models that to us, and he asks for us to respond in the same way. The last thing I want to say is in a short period of time, these people's perception of Jesus may well have changed. He didn't quite fit what they anticipated. They wanted Simon Maccabees. He gave them a cross. They wanted a warrior king. He gave them a servant heart. And so I want to encourage you when you look to Jesus as the gentle king who comes riding a donkey, also look to him as one who reveals himself. Don't let your misguided perceptions of Jesus kind of infiltrate your thinking. Instead, let Jesus and the gospel speak to you about what God has done in the person of Jesus. I pray that you might receive Jesus as king. I pray that like the crowds on that day, you might say, Hosanna, come save us, Lord, come save us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, almighty God, thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, the great rescuer, the great king. We ask that you would help us to receive him with faith, with worship, to recognize him as the king that came riding a donkey. In Jesus' name, amen.